loves them. I think that every one of us wants to live our life to know God's will for our life. One of the most asked questions is what should I do with my life and it's not only with the young people it's also with the adults. You know what should I do when it comes to my career? If you are a single person whom should I marry? Or should I you know go to do this or go to that? Should I start my business? Should I move from the city that I'm living into this city? Should I switch to, to switch to Hungry Gen? The answer is yes to that by the way. And so um, should I do this or should I do that? A lot of people ask questions like this and it's completely good and it's completely healthy to do that. And today I will shed some light on this. I believe this message will bring freedom to some people who over complicate God's will and underestimate God's ways. God's will in God's way is whatever. Let me say that again. God's will in God's way is whatever. In Colossians chapter 3 it says whatever you do, do as unto the Lord. So Paul did not go into details on what you should do. He says whatever you do, do as unto the Lord. When Apostle Paul writes to widows whose husbands passed away and he said this, he says if you choose to get remarried, he doesn't give them six tests. He says you can marry anyone as long as it's in the Lord. God's will is like the if you ever drove on a highway that has five lanes, so the highway is God's way. It's God's word. God's will is the lane you drive in. So God is less concerned with which lane you drive on. He's more concerned on which highway you are on. If you are on God's way, God's will is whatever. If you are driving to Seattle for example and you took the right highway and you're calling the secretary of transportation and say sir I would like to not miss my destination in Seattle would you tell me which lane should I be driving on? He will say whatever. <laughs> no sir you don't understand I really would like to be in the center of the wheel of the secretary of transportation and he will say you are wasting my time. What Ever. God's will is whatever. No but I want to know his perfect will. It's whatever. Psalm 1 3 says this that the righteous man verse 1 it says he doesn't stand, he doesn't sit, he doesn't walk and then it says he delights in the law of the Lord day and night. He meditates any day and night and then it says he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water and that he, his leaf will not wither. He will bear fruit in his season and it says this and whatever he does See, we live in a generation today where you have to make sure your career matches your Enneagram. Make sure that your personality matches your career choice. Make sure you're in the right, in the right boss, in the right seat, and in the right place. And there's so much we have overcomplicated the will of God in our life. Young people look as like, oh, make sure the person I marry is the right one, the only one, my friend. No matter which one you marry, you're still going to have to die to yourself. Bible doesn't tell us should you marry this, this or that. It says in the Lord. God says as long as you are in the highway of holiness, whichever lane you choose is completely up to you. And God says whatever. That's my will is for your life. Do whatever. But should I be a teacher or a police officer? What do you want? I don't know. Well that's your problem. That's not God's problem. What do you like? God should I marry her or her or her? God's answer is you're gonna live with them. Which one do you like? But God I want you to choose for me and God's gonna say I'm not gonna live with them. You will. Our day in Christ, our day on the highway. If it's in the highway of holiness my friend, whichever lane you take is gonna be blessed by God. We overcomplicate the will of God. And we underestimate the importance of walking in the ways of God. If you are in God's way, God's will for you is whatever. Amen? Amen. This was worth getting dressed up, fighting with your children and coming to church. 
let's open our Bible to first Samuel and I'm gonna based on this I'm gonna share a little bit about what the Word of God teaches us about doing what the occasion demands first Samuel chapter 9 and verse 19 and 20 Samuel answered Saul and said I am a seer go up before me to the high place and you shall eat with me today and tomorrow I will let you go and will tell you what is on your heart but as for your donkeys that were lost three days ago do not be anxious about them for they have been found a little background story this is Saul is the first king that the nation of Israel has had before that they had judges and before that they had nobody Saul is a son of Kish a very wealthy Benjamite from a tribe of Benjamin Saul is in charge of donkeys he's running a donkey shop he's overseeing make sure the donkeys are there and all is well with them and few donkeys escaped and Saul is responsible to find them so he and his servant is going looking for donkeys he can't find them anywhere there is no tracker GPS they have not had those donkeys didn't get 666 implanted on them so there's no app you can track them they don't have find me on the donkey where you can track it on your phone he had to search ask questions and then finally they came to one place where the Bible says there was a prophet the seer and they came to that place to ask the prophet for direction when they came to the prophet the prophet met them and the scripture says this he met them and he says yeah I'm the guy you're looking for tomorrow I will tell you what's on your heart Samuel said by the way about the donkeys they've been found so that that tells me that the donkeys were not on Saul's heart otherwise he would have told them about the donkeys tomorrow the next day Samuel told Saul about kingdom not about the donkeys the fact that he told him about donkeys right away tells me that the donkeys were on his mind but kingdom was in his heart now put yourself in the in the in the life of this young man Saul who is carrying a dream and I think he's really conflicted inside because part of his dream is I'm going to be a king the other part of him says you're proud Israel has never had a king God will never allow that this is against God one part says I'm gonna be a king the other part says you're arrogant and I really think he was conflicted and he was hiding that deep inside of his heart he meets a prophet and the prophet says the donkeys you're looking for that's taken care of but what I, what I really want to talk about is what's inside of your heart if you're taking notes write this down your purpose is greater than your problem I think every person in this room right now has donkeys on their mind um, wife no she's not your donkey <laughs> she is your precious jewel but sometimes she can act like a donkey your husband could be that donkey meaning right now your marriage is on your mind it's frictions perhaps your finances it represents the donkey something is missing there you're unsure if you will still have a job next coming next few months because people are being laid off perhaps right now your donkey is the bills that you need to pay and you're trying to pull ends meet in your life perhaps the donkey right now is you're a single person you like somebody and in fact you like two people and you you're not trying to figure out who you should go with this year whatever those things are they're important to God they're important to you but I want to tell you something that God sees your destiny as more important than your donkeys your donkeys might be on your mind but your destiny there is a destiny buried deep inside of your heart there is a calling that is inside of you there is a purpose that is inside of you and while we may come to God for our donkeys if we stay with God he'll reveal the destiny first thing I want you to write down under the first point is when we turn our problems to God he will give us his peace God doesn't always give us solution at first he gives us his promise and his promise carries peace his peace is almost like a confirmation that that problem is being taken care of already sometimes we don't appreciate God's answers because we feel like God will just poof, pull it into his pocket and it says oh donkey right here oh you're single and you're lonely right here let me give you a husband 
oh you you're struggling financially let me give you a million dollars we think when we come to God God will just poof, give us donkeys but God didn't give a donkey to Saul he gave him a promise which brought peace Philippians 4 it says this that do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer thanksgiving with supplication let your requests be known to God and the peace of God which surpasses understanding will guard your heart so what that tells me when I have a problem while I need a quick fix God usually how he works he says give me the problem and in return I will give you peace which will initiate the solution in your life which will initiate the change in your life somebody give God some praise right now for his precious peace peace that passes understanding meaning peace that doesn't make sense meaning peace that you should not be having right now peace that does not come from the miracle but peace that comes from the presence of peace the prince of peace Jesus Christ himself you need God's peace and he says don't be anxious about them because they've been found I really believe that this year if you draw closer to God you will see some of the things that are missing in your life will be found in your life see there are things that get stolen by the devil but there are things we miss because of our incompetence because of our mistakes because of us hurry living because of our impatience because of our wrong decisions we miss those things when you miss things or when you lose things versus things being stolen are two different things things that are being stolen you have to look for a thief but when you are missing for things you have to remember where you lost them first and when you come back to God he will bring back what's been stolen and what's been missing somebody praise God right now hallelujah thank you Jesus for your peace and for your presence I want you to notice that a prophet tells Saul, he says, I want you to dine with me tonight, stay with me overnight and tomorrow I'll tell you what's on your heart. He tells him right away the donkeys are taken care of and Saul doesn't run back home and say, well I got what I came for. Saul stays for dinner though the problem is solved and Saul stays overnight. He, he gets an Airbnb. What do you call that? Airbnb if notice I haven't stayed there yet so he, he gets a hotel he gets a he gets a hotel somewhere nearby he stays overnight and the next morning God reveals to him something that he did not come to God for if you're taking notes write this down coming to the Lord may remove your anxiety staying with the Lord will reveal his assignment for your life when I was a young insecure did not want to live teenager and I started to come to the Lord on a regular basis. He dealt with my insecurity but when I stayed with the Lord he revealed his purpose to me. You see I didn't come to have a calling. I came so I can make it. <laughs> I came because I didn't want to live. I came because I did not think my life has any kind of purpose and I was a mistake. I just came so he can heal my wounds and my heart and you know fix this whole thing that I had with my body image and everything. But as I stayed longer with him he not only took care of the donkeys for which I came for he also revealed his purpose for which I didn't even think he had for me my friend I want to tell you something don't leave the Lord where you find him continue with the Lord dine with the Lord spend a night with the Lord take a year with the Lord take a decade with the Lord because while coming to him can solve your problem staying with him can reveal your purpose coming to him can solve an anxiety staying with him can unleash your assignment coming to him can uh, can fix your issue but staying with him can reveal something that he has for you there is more to your life than finding donkeys there is more to your life than fixing insecurity there is more to your life than feeling happy there is more to your life than finishing school there is more to your life than paying down college debt there is more to your life than finding a husband and finding a wife there is more to your life than getting a boat a truck and a retirement fund there is more to your life than finding your donkeys God has a purpose God has an assignment for you can somebody say amen when I see in the Bible many people came to Jesus for a miracle and they left Jesus when they got one but those that stayed with Jesus became an extension of his mission on this earth those that came to Jesus experienced miracle those that stayed with Jesus became an extension of his mission on this earth 
the Lord doesn't just want to bring a miracle. He wants to make you and I a part of His mission. And then we become the miracles for other people's lives. And that's what happened to Saul. He came for a donkey. And I find it interesting that the prophet almost like he didn't give him everything at once. He tested him. He wanted to see will he linger longer? Will he stay even though his immediate temporary loud problems are honestly been taken care of right now. Will he go deeper after me? And Saul did and the next day oil was poured out, a word was declared and life completely transformed. Maybe you don't feel the reason to fast this year because honestly you're doing good. Unlike maybe you not in a comparison prideful way but unlike maybe other brothers and sisters your donkeys have been found but your destiny hasn't been touched. There is more to your life than paying bills. There is more to your life than paying tithes. God wants to use you in this year spiritually. My prayer is not that you will live your best year, that you will live your most spiritual year this year. My desire for you is not that you will have your happiest year, but that you will have your holiest year. Separated to God. My prayer is not God enlarge my influence, but God expand my integrity. God deepen me in you. God make my heart healthier this year. Make my life holier not before holier than thou but holier before thou before you Lord that your my life brings brings you pleasure brings you joy even if nobody will notice it and nobody will know that's what this is about it's easy to set goals this year nothing wrong with goals my friends please understand the Lord is not concerned with your goals as you are he's concerned with your growth let me say that again goals focus on destination growth focuses on the journey goals they motivate you for the month of january but growth matures you through february march april june july and so on when you reach your goal you hit a plateau but when you are growth oriented person there is no plateau there is a process of constantly becoming more like Jesus that's why in Matthew 11 the last few verses the Lord says come to me if you have anxiety heavy laden and burden he says I will give you rest that's good but he says if you stay with me if you take my yoke upon you if you learn from me and he, watch this what Jesus did not say he did not say I'll teach you even my word I'll teach you the Bible I'll teach you miracles he says I'll teach you my heart my topic my lesson is going to be issue of the heart not your success not your external things and he says and then you will find rest for yourself Jesus is interested in your growth this year more than your goals every year I set goals for myself half of those goals never get reached it's always happening I'm not a goal guy I don't know if I set them wrong or something and I get better studying those goals and God really repositions my heart and he said Vlad you're not a self-help student you're a spirit-filled disciple your life is not wrapped about goals your your life is round growth I'm interested in your growth not in your goals whether that book gets published, whether that debt gets paid off, whether those extra 20 pounds get lost, whether those things get straightened the way I see them, whether those check marks will be finished, what matters is by the end of the year that I'm a little bit more like Jesus than I were the year before. And if the goals were not reached but I grew, God is pleased. Come on. Amen. Somebody say, my purpose is greater than my current problems. The second thing I want you to notice is that our transformation happens through community or through our association. I want you to notice this in 1 Samuel chapter 10. It says, then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you 
you will prophesy with them and be turned into a different man say this with say this with me say transformation will happen through my association the Lord did not change Saul when Samuel encountered him the Lord postponed that change you will be turned into a different man when Saul would be in the company of prophets uh, AK believers saints Christians goals are good groups are better your group the place who you are so who you associate with have more influence on your future than even your education your personality your enneagram and your personal goals in fact the scripture says in second timothy chapter 2 verse 22 flee youthful lusts pursue righteousness pursue peace pursue love and then it says this thing with those somebody say with with those meaning you don't become pure in the vacuum you become pure in the community if you struggle with your purity bring your purity pursuit to a community don't pursue purity alone join a life group join a group go to a community where you are around believers I believe Satan has put six feet distance between many believers and other believers he has orchestrated social distancing and spiritual distancing among believers a lot of people have been hurt by Christians they went to small groups they went to Bible groups they went to all kinds of things and they got hurt and now they carry this thing into the next because they got hurt by their ex by their past by the things that happened before and now they're saying I can't be in the group I can't be close why because Christians are so and so in fact some people went as far as saying I will not even go to church why because I love God I just hate church it's like I love Vlad's head I just hate his body stop decapitating Jesus theologically when Jesus came to Apostle Paul he said why are you persecuting me he didn't say why are you persecuting my church Saul wasn't persecuting Jesus Jesus was in heaven but what Saul was doing to the church imperfect immature unstable still church he was doing to Jesus my friend transformation happens in the community now I understand some of you may be visiting us for just first few weeks in just about now or in a few weeks we're starting our life groups again I would like to inspire and encourage you if you want your vibe to change choose your tribe whatever cloud that's following you choose a different crowd that you associate with if you want to change what comes on you and what comes around you choose your different surrounding I find that interesting that Psalm 1:1 before the blessed man meditates in God's scriptures and before his roots reach the water before his leaves do not wither it talks about the blessed man he doesn't do three things he doesn't stay in the, he doesn't stand in the way of sinners he doesn't walk in the way of sinners he doesn't stand in the path and he doesn't sit meaning he chooses his surroundings carefully before he even gets in passionate pursuit of God's word he chooses his crowd he chooses his tribe he chooses because that my friend will change and transform you more than you realize why is it important because your crowd has something over you that a teacher your parent and even a pastor will not have it's called influence what is influence word influence has within it three letter word within influence called a flu influence works like a flu you catch it how do you get COVID it's not because you went to a university and you heard a lesson for 45 minutes about COVID then oh you got COVID no you get COVID by being around somebody who has COVID how do you catch influence how do you catch the grace that Saul caught prophecy he was around people who prophesied 
how the disciples do what they did it was very easy Pharisees said they've been with Jesus they talk like him they act like him they they, they smell like him that the, those they not educated but bold miracles follow them why because they've been with Jesus if you want to change your character this year the Bible says do not be deceived that bad company corrupts good morals the opposite is also true do not be deceived good company forms good morals you want to change the way you live change who you hang out with now I am not saying that you walk away from your unbelieving friends that's not what the Lord called us to do he wants us to live in this world but a lot of us use our non-christian friends as an excuse for evangelism but if you look back for the last six months you're listening to their music they're not listening to yours so who's evangelizing who do not use your love for the crowd that you are in for evangelism if you are there because you're lonely and looking for friends a lot of us are looking for those friends but your future will be decided by who you choose to be your friends you're like yeah well, I understand I mean this is all makes sense but you don't understand I'm busy I don't have another night to give to be with some group of, of people plus I'm awkward I, I don't know these people and everything endure pay the price so that you can get I'm pretty sure Saul who hanged out around donkeys didn't feel comfortable around prophets they're like prophesy I see this and he's like and then guess what happened Saul start prophesying if you hang out around people that are live holy it will rub off on you you will catch it like COVID and I pray to God you'll never recover from that holiness in Jesus name <laughs> come on somebody amen <laughs> say my purpose is bigger than my problems say my transformation will happen through my association and the last thing I want us to share today is verse 7 of chapter 10 and let it be when these signs come upon you that you will do as the occasion demands for God is with you so I want you to notice a few things is that God calls soul he fills him with his spirit but he doesn't tell him what to do I remember when I got hired at the church at the age of 16 part-time and then 17 right after high school full-time at the church and I asked my uncle my pastor <clears throat> I said what should I do and he said that's why I hired you <laughs> he said figure it out and I said like what like wh when do I come he said figure it out and uh, for next few years I had to figure there was no manual like right now we have employees handbook we have you know sick days and you know ask for days off and etc we had absolutely nothing the manual was this you have to meet with every pastor in town and then learn what they do and choose the best of what they do and duplicate it and that's what I had to do for many many years when God calls Saul into kingdom though there were some certain rules in the book of law of Moses Saul did not know what to do God didn't give him directions God didn't give him three steps to do this five steps to do that and I find that interesting because God doesn't need to give you directions if he gave you the driver the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit came upon Saul directions would follow if you need to get to a perfect for example if you need to get to somebody's house and the owner of that house is in your car you don't need directions to that house you got a driver in that house the only thing you have to be careful not to do is to put that owner in the trunk make sure that that owner is behind the driver's seat my friends sometimes God will not give you specific direction for this year what you should do how you should do it it will feel like you're driving blind if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will guide your life. And Holy Spirit does not operate by five-year plan, five-month plan. Sometimes Holy Spirit moves as He wills, like a wind. I am not saying this gives us an excuse not to have a plan. This gives us a reason not to have goals. But we as Christians are first and foremost spirit-filled, not 
people who are self-driven we are spirit driven that's why it's okay if you walk into 2021 and you don't know what the year will bring because if the Holy Spirit is in charge of your life he will guide you those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God the Bible says that against such there is no law but if we live by the Spirit we will walk in the Spirit Galatians chapter 5 if we have the Holy Spirit he will guide us and he will lead us some of the best things that happened in my life I never planned for them in January I didn't foresee them in, Jan in, in December they simply just happened and therefore my goal after many years of walking in ministry and walking with the Lord is not necessarily that I don't miss my goals is that I don't miss the Holy Spirit if he's with me if I'm with him even if I don't know where I'm headed even if I don't have some grand big plans I know one thing he will never let me miss God's will in my life he will connect me he will guide me and he will open the right doors even if I don't have the directions I have the driver I have the spirit of the living God and he will guide me and he will lead me and he will see the future and he will get me there he will get you there as well if you don't have directions it's okay if you have the driver that's all that matters the second thing I would like to highlight for you about this is sometimes God doesn't speak with his voice because he expects us to read the signs Saul was given three signs and the prophet said this when you see these three signs do whatever your hand finds to do sign number one you will hear men saying your donkeys were found sign number two people will give you two loaves of bread and sign number three you will come to a group of prophets and you will prophesy when these three signs are fulfilled Samuel says this to Saul do what the occasion demands if you don't hear God's clear audible voice if you don't hear God's voice in the dream in the prophecy if you don't hear God's voice that seven green lights didn't turn green on your way to work if you did not hear some kind of a clear cut scripture jumped out when you just flipped it open randomly and that didn't make it clear for you if God didn't speak audibly he put signs in front of you he expects you and I to read I remember when I was already having a relationship with my wife we were dating or courting and I was waiting for that voice from God clear cut she is your wife do not be afraid my son to take Mary as your wife for behold she will give birth to <clears throat> little Vladimir I was hoping that since Joseph wasn't a pastor and God spoke to him through an angel I said Lord I'm not to brag or anything but I, I my qualification will just just one percent higher I don't care if you don't send me Gabriel send me one of the loser angels from heaven one of like the the janitor angels like maybe the ones who you don't even like those angels like they don't even show up to your presence within closest to you send me the, the little one the tiny one well, one without wings send them to me Lord I don't care if they come during the night they can come during the day they can scare me they can beat me if they want to but God just if you did it for Joseph why can't you do it for me you know and I even fasted um, I was very close to start going to prophets and you know put the little like a like a, like a little gamble like apostles did with the cast the lots and just bring two lots like I heard some young men do it I've really wanted God's confirmation and honest I'll be honest with you I didn't hear I heard nothing but honestly God expects me to read the signs if I can't hear the voice and sometimes the signs are there like one sign that you have is called the scripture scripture says you can marry anyone in the Lord you go for it the other sign is called seasoned believers the advice of the council of the of the Christians your parents or your trusted mentor the other sign is called your spirit we're honest so you just have peace or we call it you know your gut you, you just have peace there the, the spirit of the of, of man is the lamp of the Lord and the other sign is common sense and I remember this thing where I realized I'm like I am on the highway I'm headed to the right place I'm on the highway of, of God and here I am 
calling a secretary of transportation to figure out should I switch lanes or not just go do it and really fella the Lord put in my heart he says do you like her yes is she a believer yes is she opposite sex yes what do your parents say they like her pastor yes what do you feel I like her a lot son what are you waiting for go for it which part of go you don't understand g or o just go if you can't hear read the signs some of us hear voices that are not from God because God's voice will never contradict God's sign if the sign says wrong direction but the voice says right direction don't listen to the voice listen to the word because God's word never contradicts God's voice the voice you're hearing I don't know it could be lack of sleep it could be some kind of thing that you took somebody maybe spiked your drink or something it could be honestly the enemy's voice it could be what you want to hear but be careful to follow a voice that contradicts the word that's exactly what Joseph Prince started Mormonism that's exactly how Muhammad started Islam he heard a voice and rejected the sign follow the sign take a left turn on the sign take a right turn on the sign learn to be a spirit-filled believer who reads the signs and the signs of your time properly as well not only the sign of God's word not only the sign advice of the believers not only the sign of your spiritual intuition but also the sign of the times the sign of your season the season that you are in if you're in middle school you don't have to hear a prophet to know it's not your time to get married yeah it's very simple common sense follow the season the sign that you are in this the, the the sign of that season and the bible says this when you see the sign do what your hand can do do what the occasion demands so many things in my personal life i have not done because i felt called because it needed to be done there was nobody else there or because there was a need needed to be done that I feel qualified nope that I feel prepared nope was there like somehow it connected me to my future destiny no it just needed to be done we need to get away from this thing where we are obsessed with not missing quote unquote our calling sometimes you just need to do what needs to be done if you're filled with Holy Spirit you'll never miss God's calling if you do what needs to be done that's it if they need help at kids ministry trust me you will never offend God by teaching children about God if they need help if the church needs help with prayer if we if we're doing the fast you'll never miss God by following God's word you'll never miss God by staying simple and obeying simple gospel oh but I don't know if God wants me to have a life group of course he does go and make disciples there's nothing wrong with having that but I just don't know if this is what God really wants me to do is to tell others about Jesus he said it very clearly that's what he wants you to do you don't need another sign from the Lord this year I always lived with that my pastor when he would tell me you need to preach awesome we need to preach and then I went and prayed and fasted for God to confirm that but honestly if that needs to be done it needs to be done do what the occasion demands sometimes your life changes you know you have children now you're not able to do what you were able to do before do what the occasion demands if you're filled with the Holy Spirit do not obsess or fret over the details of the direction of God for your life do what the season demands you know mighty man of God Bryson he was an intern director for five years you know he saw this will be for the rest of his life but the occasion changed and so when Bryson walked away from being a director of internship he didn't walk away from ministry he just walked away from a particular occasion and now he's in a different occasion but he's still serving God the same way Pastor Martin's wife Sylvia you know when they had a third child and she was leading the kids ministry which she still is and she was on a full-time staff and now she needed to transition out to be with her family she's not walking away from her calling it's just this occasion demands something different never get so attached and addicted to your particular goals and your particular thing when the occasion has changed 
your season has changed your children notice it your mama told you about it your teacher everybody says what are you doing oh no I'm just addicted to this thing you're gonna miss God's will because you're not doing what the occasion demands when you're filled with the Spirit of God when you're walking in the paths of God do what the occasion demands do what your hand can do if your hand cannot lift that anymore lift something else but do that God's ability in you is activated through your action don't compare yourself to your previous season don't compare yourself to your dream season don't compare yourself to your neighbor's season don't compare yourself to your previous season do what the occasion demands do what your hand can do. Whatever you do, do is unto the Lord. And the righteous man planted like a tree. Whatever he does, he will prosper. When the city connects electricity to your house, you don't call the city manager every single time you want to connect a dishwasher and say, sir, is it okay if I connect a phone charger? I know the outlet you connected is very precious. The electricity is very precious. It's a power. I don't want to be disrespectful to this power. Is it okay if I connect a microwave? The city manager will say, could you please stop calling me about these things? We connected the electricity. You know what? Whatever you connect to those outlets, is it's up to you. I just don't want to break any laws. You will break laws if you keep calling. <laughs> Do what the occasion demands. What is God's word for you this year? If you don't have a plan, you don't have a clear picture, be filled with Holy Spirit and do what the occasion demands. You'll never miss God's will like that. God's will is in God's way, whatever. Let's rise to our feet.